Hello everybody, welcome to Weekly Market News. My name is Stepan and today is Monday 9th of November and uh, stock markets are riding on a very positive wave as we are having a new president in the United States and also some major news are, are coming to the market uh, as we are speaking right now. So let's look at the markets, what was happening last week and what could happen in the week ahead so uh, as we are looking right now S&P 500, DAX, NASDAQ all other stock indices around the world uh, very positive week uh, during the whole week uh, basically everything was pushed up with the elections as uh, the Joe president uh, I mean new president uh, as right now Joe Biden in the last week uh, we were counting votes basically the whole entire week the official result came on Saturday. Uh, as we know right now, the, the new president of the United States is Joe Biden. Overall, uh, it was welcomed very positive uh, by stock markets. And overall, uh, with the markets, there was a huge risk on sentiment, which continues uh, this week with uh, some major news that we are going to talk about in a second. But uh, back to the election, uh, Joe Biden um, basically turned around some major states uh, as we are looking at the current uh, result is 279 to 214 uh, in favor of Joe Biden. What happened there was Joe Biden took, uh, uh, took lead in uh, some major swing states, uh, especially in Pennsylvania where, where Trump was winning um, until Friday. Also, uh, Nevada, Arizona, uh, Wisconsin or Michigan, that's where Biden was able to uh, turn the result around and uh, basically took this early uh, win. As right now, as we are speaking, there are still vote, uh, votes counted in Georgia, in Arizona, but this will not help President uh, Donald Trump. Uh, as I was expecting the results or how this uh, result could affect the market uh, was quite different uh, than the official uh, reaction. I thought that the Joe, uh, that the current president Donald Trump, will take some legal actions uh, more aggressively than he took. Uh, there were some uh, rejections from courts in Pennsylvania or or Georgia uh, to stop uh, stop counting votes. Uh, they kept going. Uh, the same thing, according to some political analyst uh, analysis, uh, it should not be affected. Uh, saying that uh, the current result should not be changed uh, just based on the uh, on some legal actions that the Trump team could take uh, to to basically affect the results of the elections. So I thought we will be much more aggressive. Uh, the stock might react uh, with the downturn, uh, as we can see uh, for our time frame, S&P 500 and other stock indices very positive week. Uh, behind us, uh, which was mainly driven by the fact that uh, the Senate uh, probably will not be taken control by the Democratic Party. It will stay in control of the Republican Party. And as uh, we can look in the history, uh, usually if there was a Democratic president and, um, and the Senate and the, and the other, uh, basically the government uh, will be taken uh, will be uh, in uh, in the power of uh, Republican Party. Uh, it's a kind of a great uh, combination because uh, you know those far left uh, far left uh, actions like uh, uh, basically not lowering the taxes but making higher taxes uh, will not affect the market because Republicans will probably uh, not. Uh, accept this uh, offers. So this is overall a very positive as we are looking right now currently at the stock market we can see for our time frame uh, we open up a little higher on S&P 500 and right now we are surging heavily which is mainly due to the newest uh, newest uh, late stage trial data from Pfizer or BioNTech uh, you can see the data shows that COVID vaccine is more than 90% effective in preventing in infection. This is a huge news for stock markets. This is basically a few minutes old. So uh, you could see 
basically across the whole across the markets you can see maybe 30 minutes time frame you can see how big this uh, rise is right now uh, basically like I said S&P 500 DAX uh, this obviously is going to affect also the um, the forex markets uh, the euro there is some volatility on euro GBP USD um, obviously there's going to be a huge volatility right now as we are speaking on USD Japanese yen let's let's uh, let's find it out um, because obviously what we saw last week is probably going to continue this week uh, we will again have to wait for Donald Trump if he's going to take some legal actions uh, maybe uh, maybe stand to it very much more aggressively than the last um, than the last week so um, again this we have to wait how how, how this this thing will play out uh, as we are looking right now at USD Japanese yen. you can see uh, there was a huge depreciation of uh, US dollar but right now there is more a depreciation of a uh, Japanese yen so um, like I said there's a huge risk on sentiment on the market it stays with the market as the current news about the vaccine come comes in um, this cop can probably the positive sentiment can persist uh, at least a few more trading sessions uh, until there will come some very aggressive statement from Donald Trump. So, like I said, this is a very positive news. Uh, if we can look at the other things that were happening in the markets last week was mainly about the elections, but also there were some interesting news from a U.S. job market. Uh, you, you can look with me at the at, at, at the N, 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 NFP numbers. Uh, right here you can see the economy was able to create 638,000 new jobs uh, also the unemployment rate uh, dropped to 6.9 percent um, a little worse a little worse uh, report from Canada where the uh, unemployment rate dropped only uh, to 8.9 from 9 percent uh, also uh, employment uh, change so the economy was able to create only 83,000 new jobs so the obviously the pace of creating new jobs are is slowing uh, but the uh, overall uh, let's say situation at the job market in the United States the, in its biggest economy on the planet uh, it's looking quite good it's not really uh, it's not really that good uh, if we are going to look at other numbers that are not that significant for example the continuing and the permanent job losses uh, that are still surging so there are some people that are coming back to work but also some people are uh, as the PPP programs and other fiscal stimulus uh, programs are running out um, some companies just can't uh, afford to keep uh, some employees so uh, th there will be more and more permanent uh, job losses in the economy which uh, obviously needs to be prevented by the fiscal stimulus and that's also one thing that will be main focus on in the coming weeks as the uh, Joe, Pre Joe Biden the new president uh, will take the office from uh, January and obviously um, Nancy Pelosi, the Democratic Party, is pushing the fiscal stimulus, uh, the, the bigger fiscal stimulus. A Republican Party wants some uh, lower fiscal, st fiscal stimulus, so maybe there will be some consensus find in the middle. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. We were told before that we have to wait uh, until, the, after, until after the elections to get the fiscal stimulus, so we will see if um, right now is the right time. But as we are looking right now what Donald Trump is saying that he is saying it he won the election and and the other uh, result is basically a fraud like I said we will have to wait and uh, we'll see well, how this thing will affect the markets so that's basically what happened in the markets uh, like like you can see very positive uh, also uh, we can look at crude oil uh, WTI right now uh, surging above $40 a barrel um, this is also pushed by the overall positive sentiment on the risk assets uh, and also by the news that the Russian energy minister Novak uh, came uh, and uh, met with some Russian producers 
to discuss a possible extension of production cuts, uh, not uh, like we were talking before that the OPEC was uh, basically planning to cut down, cut down those cuts uh, continually from the beginning of the next year, with, so the production would go up, supply would go up in the current situation when the COVID and the Germany is uh, in lockdown, Czech Republic lock is in lockdown, uh, France, uh, UK, uh, all these European economies are coming into lockdown. Also in US, you can see uh, the coronavirus, coronavirus cases are rising rapidly in an enormous pace uh, as we are speaking right now, there are more than 100,000 cases per day. So this also could lead to some partial lockdowns in some states, especially in Texas, uh, which has more than 1 million infected people. So those are the things that uh, will probably get worse as the uh, flu season will come to uh, US. But like I said, we are talking right now about oil. Oil is looking quite good. Um, and it's mainly right now you can see as well as S&P 500 and other stock indices It's mainly reacting to the news about the uh, vaccine from Pfizer or, and BioNTech So uh, that's about the markets uh, We can look quickly at the gold market which is uh, hugely affected by uh, moves on US dollar You can see right now uh, last week was looking very positive We went up above $1,900 uh, but as you can see right now it's uh, quite a mystery why, why gold is dropping so low maybe because the, the just the risk on the market and the in the economy is not that big so uh, maybe gold as a hedge uh, you know in those difficult times is just uh, running out of, out, out of steam and the US dollar is just not enough and like we could saw on the forex market, uh, the main moves uh, about this risk of sentiment uh, could have been seen on Japanese yen. So that's about the markets uh, in this week uh, and last week what was happening. Uh, let's look at quickly what is happening um, in the week ahead, what a kind of macroeconomic news we have. Uh, and we can watch out for some unexpected volatility. Like I said, Donald Trump will probably be uh, one of the main sources of volatility in this week. And also uh, tomorrow on Tuesday, we have job data from uh, UK, uh, ZEP index uh, from uh, Germany. Uh, also on Wednesday, we have a meeting of uh, New Zealand Central Bank. So there is probably going to be some volatility over there. Uh, OPEC monthly oil report and ECB Christine Lagarde will have a speech on uh, Thursday. We might have some interesting data from UK again, like GDP. Um, for the rest of the day, we have inflation from United States, jobless claims, uh, another stock change in the US, uh, and on Friday. It should be more or less a uh, quite calm session as we are not expecting any significant uh, macroeconomic data. So that will be it for this week. Uh, we can look quickly at the, uh, at the earnings uh, for this week if we are expecting some uh, interesting earnings. Uh, but overall we have uh, reported most of the big names that we are, were expecting uh, already reported. But Monday, uh, McDonald's, uh, Aurora, a cannabis, uh, cannabis manufacturer from uh, uh, Canada. Uh, on Tuesday, we have Lyft, a very interesting uh, look at how these companies and the, these uh, sharing uh, economic type of companies uh, were able to perform in the third quarter. Also, uh, we have uh, on Wednesday, nothing really interesting. On Thursday, Cisco is uh, reporting, mm, nothing really much. And on Friday, Manchester United, <laughs> which is quite uh, just an interesting fact and nothing really else uh, happening this week. So this will be it for this week. I hope you will 
And guys, enjoy this video. If you, you have any questions, leave it down in the comment section under the video on YouTube or Facebook. And uh, I will be looking for you uh, at this time uh, again next week.